Welcome to another edition of Dan Factoids. In this edition, we'll be talking about dry suit issues and particularly, what about the underlayers, the thermal layers of the dry suit? <laughs> We got the following question through the Dan hotline about a dry suit. This is the question that was posed to us. I've been using a dry suit since last year for the winter months. And now it's that time again and I often hear people suggesting wearing form-fitting, moisture-wicking clothing as a bottom layer. Now this is all good and well on the dry suit side, but my query is, what about the negatives of wearing compression clothes. Apparently, it circulates the blood better, so it shouldn't be harmful on the decompression sickness side, but I wanted to check. And I've looked at several garments that would possibly work as undergarments. There is the issue of compression, and I would like to know whether I should go for form-fitting or whether I could use any reasonable thermal garment. What does Dan have to say from a decompression sickness or safety point of view? Well, there's an excellent article on dry suits that considers the various issues of um, thermal considerations and uh, insulation and buoyancy and so on, and we'll give you the link towards the end of this uh, factoid series. But Insulated or electrically heated garments are relevant when diving, particularly in cold waters. And it's important to be protected from the cold when diving. Adequate or effective thermal protection requires three garment layers. A base layer, an insulating layer, and a shell. And the function of each layer is as follows. The base layer, which is typically made of polyester or polypropylene, wicks moisture away from the skin to prevent heat loss through conduction. The insulating layer, which is either merino wool, microfiber, fleece or other materials, traps and holds heat to reduce heat loss through conduction. And then there's the shell or the outer layer, membrane neoprene or a hybrid which holds in the air to further reduce conductive or convective heat loss. So whatever you decide you should adjust your thermal protection according to the type of dive you intend to undertake. The factors to consider in choosing are the weight of the insulating layer as well as the temperature of the water and your personal metabolism, as well as the anticipated activity, what you're going to be doing underwater while diving. You should therefore adjust your thermal protection according to the type of diving you intend to undertake. Factors and choosing the weight and all these other things are elaborated in the article that is posted at the bottom of this particular Dan Factoid series. We hope that this has been helpful and please subscribe to our channel and if you have any further questions be free to pose them to us. We love your questions. After all, Dan is about divers helping divers. Thank you. Thank you.